Hi, this is Brian, the Overworked IT Guy. Today I'm coming at you with a home improvement slash electronics project. Ignore the cat in the background over there. The project that I'm coming at you with is some night lighting for my kids' rooms. Uh, so we are expecting a child here in a couple months. And one of the cool things I did in the Jack and Jill bathroom when I redecorated a couple months ago, or at this point a year ago, was I installed some night lights in the crown molding in the bathrooms and showed pictures to you know, family, friends, everybody loved it, everybody wanted to see how I did it, including some of the uh, folks I bought the parts from. So, this is going to be a little video tour of that uh, remodel setup with those lights to show you sort of how they work, how I installed it, and what it looks like behind the scenes. I recorded a lot of the video and the audio on my cell phone here so I could take it around the house, up in the attic. So, uh, let's, uh, let's start the tour off. Enjoy. This is what I've got in the attic. It's a 12 volt, 40 amp power supply. If you can see in the light here, the red and black are the 12 volt outs. Black, white, and green is the hot neutral and ground down to the AC. I've got outlets installed in my attic. This particular one here is a constant on, but for the purposes of installation, I used a Wemo light switch so I could turn it on and off as I went as I added strips to the chain. This outlet is a switched outlet for the Jack and Jill bathroom. This runs on a much smaller power supply over here. This way when you flip one of the three-way switches in the Jack and Jill bathroom, the lights work as expected. I used 12 gauge speaker wire because it's what I had and basically punched it through this rise here is the vaulted ceiling pass-through. So the height of the crown molding is right behind, or I should say right behind this insulation here. And behind me is the other one for the matching bedroom, wired the same way. You can see four circuits coming off of this one because it's more light strips in that room. Room is bigger, but otherwise same exact setup. Runs down, I've got my cable management on the other side of the stud. I've got my constant on outlet. Down below it is just a regular box. I need it to splice in somewhere safely. So I use the, another box to do the splice in. And it works the same way over here where the wires drop down and just punch through. You can see one here going behind the insulation to pop out behind the crown molding. Now that we're downstairs, this is in one of the two bedrooms. This is a Fire HD 10 tablet mounted to a 3D printed wall frame I bought on Etsy. Links are in the description. And you tap, wakes the tablet up. This is running a web interface from OpenHab as part of the OpenHab suite. And you can see on here I have buttons for fan lights, fan control, master power, button to turn on the hallway lights. In this case, if I tap the front ceiling lights, notice it turns on, the color turns on. It's in the daylight, so it's a little hard to see, but you can see the color turns on as well. And then naturally I can also turn on the fan lights. Look up, they're set to mauve. If I tap another button, they switch to daylight. And that's the local control in the room. So let's turn it all off. And let's go check out the bathroom. Okay, we're in the bathroom. I uh, forgive the little bit of a mess on the countertop. But in here, you can see the crown molding is set up the same way. The bottom of the crown molding, it's roughly eight to 10 inches from the ceiling. It's two pieces, same as in the bedroom. Assembled a piece of base molding. And then on top of the base molding is traditional crown molding. The base molding gives me something to nail into and a nice support to stand it off the wall and make it look a little decorative. In this room, it's a Jack and Jill. You can see, ignore the mess please. We've got two wall switches, one on either side. I wanted either side to be able to turn the night light on, so I can turn it on over here. There's that lovely blue glow coming from the ceilings. This was uh, set up for an underwater theme at one point. I can then walk over here, turn it off, 
works fine from the other side of the room. So, that's the bathroom setup. And for comparison's sake, here is simple, standard, normal crown molding. You can see with my hand tight to the wall, tight to the ceiling, no drop, runs at a regular angle. I think this is 35 degree crown molding. Um, but either way, it's traditional crown molding installation. If I wanted to convert to this room and to do the same thing, I'd take down all the crown molding, replace it, drop it down several inches, install the base molding behind it, and the new crown molding on top of it. Now I've got a view of up in the crown molding. This little box here is my Geld Opto RGB controller. You can see the red, or it looks red, but it's really black and red wires coming in, which is the 12 volt in. Attached to this side is the LED strip. You can sort of see here, the LED strip is basically just tacked to the back of the crown molding with the glue that comes on it. Around corners it gets a little dicey, but otherwise it sticks in there pretty well. And that speaker wire just lays in the bottom of the crown molding, like that. Runs right along the channel. Nothing fancy. On the last piece, I just left the end, taped them together, or taped it over so nothing shorts out. Runs like that all the way around the room. Over here, I have a junction between two pieces. You can see at eye level, you really can't even tell. But as we pop around, I've got a strand on the left and a strand on the right. In the middle here is an RGB amplifier that's getting power from a piece of speaker cable that I ran down the channel. And either side of it, there's the input and the output of the RGB signal. These are great, they fit right in the crown molding. The other way you could do it is with uh, mounted, for example, in the attic. They have a little bit higher throughput or higher power output, uh, but these work just as well. They're pretty cheap on eBay. Links down bottom again. The hardest part here is getting this overlap to line up. You can see it wasn't perfect, but once you come down, I'm only about two steps down the ladder. You really can't tell, looks fine. And here you can see a video of the room at night on the tablet. I can easily change which color is up there from blue to green. And you can see it lights up the whole room very nice at night. There are no other lights on in the room. As I switch it over to pink, it gives the whole room a pinkish purplish hue. And all of these colors are predefined in open hab. There's nothing magical about these. They're just HSL settings it's passing to the controller and heading to the bathroom here I can flip the switch and this is preset to turn on to the last color that was configured which in this case is blue uh, to go with the underwater theme of the rooms and I can walk over to the other side of the room here and it has the same light switch to turn it back off. So that concludes the tour of the nursery. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, feel free to leave them below in the comment section uh, or follow up on my blog is another option you can do that. A uh, link will be down below in the comments. Uh, if you like what you saw here, don't forget to hit, give it the old thumbs up and click the subscribe button to see more content from me. Uh, thanks for watching.